Well, hello there, person. What's up? How are you? Hey, we're checking out some new stuff with Wraithbinder this week. And the first thing to show off is the new color palette. So, um, let me show you what I'm talking about here, actually. Uh, we're going to go to, we're going to open up, um, this custom color palette I basically created to make sure that all the colors are distinct for all eight players. So there's eight different colors that correspond to the eight different players. And um, here's some, some things I went through originally, right? Here's the original colors I had. Here's some with more saturation, etc. Here's what I ended up on. These colors sort of look more distinct to me, especially check out these like this little, these this green and this green, they're pretty close. And especially when you run that through a shader, um, these colors might, because there's some color banding going on, um, which really helps to make the game look a little bit more retro, it just basically just limits the amount of hue, hues that the game can use. Um, because there's limited hues, those if those two hues kind of tended to blend together a little bit, and these two as well, these two bluish ones. So look down here, these ones are, they all kind of come out a lot more distinct. And there's even some saturation differences in there too that really help to make them more distinct. So um, that is really, really neat, right? Uh, so what I wanted to do was to incorporate that into the game's main shaders. So the shaders really do a lot of custom stuff, like I was talking about the color banding. And uh, this basically makes sure that it passes in a, a, whole different, a whole set of hues that the game can use to the shader. And every time that the shader goes and chooses a color, it makes sure to... Um, pick one that's on the list of hues right here that it can use. So that basically means that these colors that I've custom chosen right here, this color palette, gets used in the game exactly. Even the background clouds now have the this really nice tendency to be just exactly the right hue. And then, um, so that's kind of in general what's going on here on this color palette. And we can see that if we run around the map a little bit that this yellow right here looks really nice and yellow um this blue is nice and distinct this purple this pinkish this reddish pink this sort of orangish red and then this orange they're all nice and distinct and then they're actually the background clouds have something really nice going on too there's some um, this is my base right here and we'll give this a second and the, the hue of the background will switch back to my color it's slowly blending right now there we go now it's back to this sort of aqua tealish green color that's that's my team color um, what's happening in the background is um, thanks to some feedback on Twitter uh, this week some people mentioned that hey the you know the background isn't really it all kind of blends together right so what I did was I took the background hue and made it shift a little bit in the upper left corner and the lower right corner, which changes if I rotate the camera, right? The, the, it stays the same color in the same corner of the direction it's actually pointing towards um, in, the, in the game's world. But in the top left corner, as we're looking at the screen right now, it's more pinkish. Um, and that's because it's taking the background hue and shifting it a little bit and then applying a gradient across the whole screen So that down in the lower right corner. We have a little bit more of a yellow color. So we've got that going from pink to yellowish and um, I think you can see it a little bit clearer if we go over here Yeah, so what that does it and also it's desaturated a little bit too so the the foreground elements have most of the saturation going on and the background is a lot more um, desaturated to sort of really give it the distinction with the hue, the saturation, and also the value too. The value has really been dialed in to make sure that it is not too bright and not too dark. So that is a really, really nice thing to make the game. The, the whole game's color scheme is a lot prettier, in my personal opinion. And I know it is because it's just the colors pop so much more especially when you're playing a match and you get around you start running around the map a little bit the colors are just way more poppy than they used to be a lot less drowned out a lot less gray than they used to be so that's one big thing this week the other big thing this week is making these impacts a lot more impactful so now you're noticing when i'm hitting things there's a really nice connection going on look at this the entities that are getting hit are shaking 
the camera's got a nice shake going on. That's helping. Um, there's actually a slight zoom on the camera too, so I don't know if you can see it, but it's very slight. It's only like one or two pixels. But you can you can see it when you look at the the abilities on the on the left side, or if you focus on the um, the bobbles at the bottom with the health and the mana. Um, you can see that whenever something's getting hit, the screen is slightly zooming, and that's only when I hit something or I get hit. Um, if an enemy goes and hits something like this, let's let, let one of these creeper guys hit something. All oh, these guys are going to explode. It's not going to be the same effect. Uh, but yeah, anyways, the creeper guys don't cause that whole screen zoom in to happen. But uh, there's a nice shape going on with the entities, like I was just mentioning. Um, there's also darker, or using a dark color now whenever any, an entity is being damaged. It used to be white only, so... Um, whether you were getting healed, when you get healed, it would be a slow white glowing effect that was going on. But when you heard something, it would be a white quick flash. And both those just weren't that distinct, right? So now it's a nice dark color when you're actually damaging something. And um, it's a nice light color when something's being healed. And then there's also some dust happening when you hit things. That's nice. You know, like, like if you're shaking off some dust by hitting stuff. Um, there's also, you can clearly see the numbers now. The numbers were a lot more, um, they weren't as black and white before. There was a lot less contrast going on. So that caused them to sort of fade into the background too much. But now they're nice and white and black so that they really stand out. You can see what, what how much damage you're doing to entities. Um, what else is new with all that? Oh, the sparks are a little bit nicer. Um, and, uh, oh, gosh. This is kind of the most most important part here. Um, before, before all these improvements, whenever you would do a screen shake, see, there's a little bit of camera zoom, but there's also some screen shake going on whenever you're hurting something. And the problem with it before was that when I would run, when I would, ru when I would do a running attack like this, what happened was the, the camera kept on moving while the shake was going on so the shake tended to get drowned it out by the camera movement even though the camera was shaking because the camera was moving more than it's shaking you didn't really notice the fact that the camera was shaking at all so simple little trick this is again thanks to some people on twitter thank you guys for all the comments this week um it's a uh, it's now this is kind of a neat trick like basically the cam the camera stops any movement um, from happening whenever there's a shake going on. So if I'm running and I hit something, the camera actually stops moving. I'm, it's and it's you can see it, but you can especially feel it when you're playing this game and you've got the, the your movement held down. It feels like the the tick is actually stopping. That's a technique that most people use in single player games. I use it in Songbringer, where you would pause the actual the game's tick. Pa you actually sleep the game for a, a frame or two. Pause all the rendering, pause everything, pause movement, so that it felt like you really had an impact, a connection when you're when you would damage something. Um, but I can't use that technique because this is going to be an online multiplayer game, and in online multiplayer games, you don't really want to sleep your tick because you want it to run all the time. You always want to be accepting input from other players, making sure players are in sync, and all that kind of stuff. So, like for example, you couldn't just have one client out of eight sleeping. Uh, for a frame or two because then it, it's just going to cause all kinds of chaos when you go to keep, keep your clients in sync in multiplayer. Um, I know this because I've done it before. I've made a, a, a real-time multiplayer game before, so um, so I know this. This is a really great thing to know what techniques I can use and what techniques I can't. So um, so it's using this, this... This turned out to be... I didn't know this would actually have this effect, but by stopping the camera's movement when you when the screen shakes it creates that feeling of connection without actually sleeping the tick which is so cool so glad i finally got that feeling of connection in there really really improvement improved with the whole feeling of impact whenever you're whenever you're hitting stuff in this game so that's all for this week thank you so lot for watching this video and i'll come at you with some more updates to wraith binder next week oh and by the way before i before i sign off check out Check out 
Oh, jeez. What the hell? Okay, that was weird. I was trying to get to show you this. But this mini-map has been improved a little bit since last week, too. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.